speaking about bad decisions, what oh, was no. that story of ISIS making a credible threat against you? <sighs> yeah, what are a bunch of cowards though? Um, so this is like Pete Caliphate, you know, ISIS has taken over Northern Iraq and they're starting to gain ground and they're capturing people and art and American arms and they're selling it on the black market. And like a bunch of land that we had fought for, we are losing to ISIS. They were also trying, you know, they, they had radicalized a whole bunch of mosques in the United States. And I get a call from the FBI saying that ISIS was trying to recruit somebody locally to find me and my family and where we lived to come and kill us. And I was like, I said, can you say that again? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we're, they're trying to find somebody locally to kill you and your family. I was like, that's fucking sick. That's such great news, dude. I've been traveling all over the world. What you're telling me is that these idiots are going to come to my house in Texas. So I call my friend that works for Fox news. He's like, Hey man, can you put me on live? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, all right, check it out. So my address, so I get live on Fox news and I say my address live on Fox television. I was like, you can send absolutely anybody that you want to my house to try and kill me and my family. Just know that you're never going to get them back. I'm going to kill them all. How did this go down with your wife? She was so mad at me. Yeah. She like, she's like, I'm out. And she like popped smoke just for like a day. But then she came right back because, you know, I got the goods and no, not really. She was really mad, but, um, not, it wasn't surprising that they, of course, they're so tough when there's like 20 of them and they're attacking a village that's unarmed with a bunch of little girls. They don't, want to, they, they don't even like deal with one man that would like stand up. When I say like be that somebody, um, in every situation, it always only takes one person. Fear is contagious, but so is courage. You know, when one person stands up and is like, no, this is wrong. And then somebody else is like, yeah, there's something off about this. I agree with that guy. And then it just like a tidal wave of courage just spontaneously combusts amongst all these people. And they're like, fuck, no, you can't do this. Um, you know, I had hundreds of people being like, we'll sit up on your street all night long. You know, we're setting up rotating guards. And I was like, I don't want that, man. I need a conus kill. <laughs> like, what do I got to do? What's a conus kill? Oh yeah. So, um, when you go out, remember you're speaking to a muggle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you go outside of the continental U S and fight abroad, you are Oconus. Right. And so like getting fighting and killing a terrorist in Afghanistan. Right. Um, that's just like a war. Oconus. Yeah. Oconus. But if you're in the United States and let's say you are in Covina at your Christmas party and this terrorist that has been radicalized walks into this Christmas party and plans to kill everybody because they think Christmas is bad because it has to do with Jesus, you know? And they're like, ah, da, 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 and you're like, pow, conus kill. Right. Sick. Have you got one? You no. Just, no. Ruined it. Yeah. Loser. Uh, and was there any, was there ever any more comeuppance about that? No, nah, the FBI was pissed at me for a little while. Um, the news was pissed. My wife was pissed. Um, nah. but you were excited. I was, I was well armed. I was hopeful. Yeah. Yeah. You immediately went on whatever it is like bigguns.com and got more. No, I didn't need any more. Yeah. Hope's not a plan. It, it just didn't pan out to be anything. Super funny story. I was in the USADA, um, the United States anti-doping pool because I was a professional athlete and I was driving home during this period and I see this car and I kind of lived in this area that there's not a lot of through traffic. So I see this car, you know, following them, makes a turn, makes a turn, makes a turn. And like five turns later, they're on my street and they slow down as I turn in my driveway and he pulls up in front of my house. And by the time, you know, he puts his vehicle into park, he has a gun in his face Right. You and would have shot the USADA guy. That's right. <laughs> I I imagine imagine like, I'm a USADA. And I was like, ah, <laughs> all right, let's go get my piss. I imagine that there's a lot of athletes that would have probably quite liked to have shot the USADA guy. Yeah, they're, they're, they were- Pretty sure John Jones would have probably been able to shoot the USADA guy. That would have been a solution for him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he needs any more drama. What a talented athlete though. Uh, Biofire. Have you heard of this? Mm -mm. So it's a smart gun that was invented by a guy who 
started working on it after the Aurora Theatre shooting. Mm-hmm. Uh, fingerprint and facial recognition. Lame. And it only fires Lame. if the right person's. What do Lame. you think of smart guns? Lame. Why? I don't know. They're stupid. I don't want that. Um. So can my wife shoot my gun? You add users to the profile. Yeah. Uh, who controls that profile? Just you, suppose. Just you? Like safes that I'm only supposed to access unless the FBI calls the manufacturer and gets permission to gain access to my safe without a subpoena or warrant. That happened this year. Probably not as secure as that. You got subpoenaed to- No, I didn't. Th- right. This was uh, something that happened this year. I'm just giving an example of okay. if anybody else has- So this Second Amendment thing, nobody gives me authority to this inherent right for me to protect myself and my family. The government is not saying that I get to protect me and my family. This is my God-given right to protect me and my family. This is not somebody has access to a program to give me the tool to protect my family. I just have this right and I have should have access to any tools that I deem necessary to protect myself, my family, my property, and even more by extension, freedom. So against a tyrannical government, but over government overreach, you know, it's it's not just like hunting sports and me and my family. This is hunting sports, me and my family. And if the government gets too big and gets too nosy into my life, this is what happened in 1776. Like we were pretty cool until we weren't cool. And then you guys started asking too much of us. And then we said no. And then we killed all of you. That's a, I know this is a hard thing. It's a very difficult day for me. I've survived two July 4th since I've been here. I actually wore a t-shirt that said, happy treason day, ungrateful colonials. Yes. Uh, I wore that on on July 4th last year. Yeah. It's, it's a hard thing to wrap yourself around unless this this is what pumps in America, should be pumping in Americans' blood. It's like, we are rebels. We have always been rebels. You cannot tell me what to do. There's nothing that you can say to me. Every single one of those beautiful amendments in that fantastic, one of the best pieces of words ever put together in history is the constitution. And it says that those are our God-given rights and nobody has a right to control those. The freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, like overreach to you coming into my home, like due process, the right to bear arms. All of those things are my rights. So like, no, I don't want a system. I don't want a fingerprint. I don't want facial recognition. I want a cannon. And I want a Gatling gun, mini gun attached to my motorcycle. And I want a tank and I should be able to have it. I'm pretty sure the Black Rifle guys have got a minigun attached to a Tesla. We did that. Is that you? Yeah, I mean, no, no, that, that was Matt and Jared. Right. But you've played around yeah. with- Right, okay. We were trying to talk Elon Musk into building a trebuchet that would launch a tes- Tesla. At what? At anything. An I mean, enemy. <laughs> no. Oh my God, uh, they're, send- <laughs> they're sending they're shooting Teslas. Teslas. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I mean, any electric vehicle should just be launched into the stratosphere. Except Teslas, because they're pretty fast. They're pretty cool. Yeah. In other news, this episode is brought to you by Element. Stop having coffee first thing in the morning. (laughs) Your adenosine system that caffeine acts on isn't even active for the first 90 minutes of the day, but your adrenal system is, and salt acts on your adrenal system. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium that helps to curb cravings, improve your brain function, and regulate your appetite. You might not actually be that tired, you might just be dehydrated, and proper hydration isn't just about getting enough fluids, it's also about getting enough electrolytes, and this is the best in the world at it. Also, there's a no BS, no questions asked refund policy, so you can buy it completely risk-free, try it, drink the entire box, and if you do not like it for any reason, they'll give you your money back, and you don't even need to return it. That's how confident they are that you'll love it. Head to the link in the description below to get a free sample pack of all eight flavors with your first box or go to drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. That's drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Tim, you will love the full length two and a half hour podcast, which is available right here. Go on. Give it a press.